Okay, okay thanks. Thank you very for first talk. Yeah, that's very good. I can't see anybody. Anyway, so this is joint work with Ning Ning, and what we're looking for is programming language primitives for ch making choices, where the choices are based on optimizing something. So let's have a look at an example. So this is from Smart Choices, which was actually a project uh, system combining programming and machine learning. This is just an example of binary search, researching for the, the, the place in some array where some element X occurs in array A. And so you want to have a pivot. So the question is, what pivot should you choose? So what you do here is you say, I don't know what pivot to choose. I'm just going to ask some oracle. So you ask this oracle, you say, please, choose me a pivot from this range LR and by the way <coughs> I'm trying to find X and at L the array has AL and at R the array has AR so you give it some evidence and it uses that and makes a choice and obviously it succeeds or it fails if it succeeds we're happy if it doesn't we pay a cost and we recurse to the left or right as usual <coughs> so the question is how do you make these choices and in the smart choices it was some reinforcement learning thing, but the, the problem, well, I don't see the problem, but the, the point is that that was fixed. The programmer doesn't have any, cont any control over how they make the actual choices. So it'd be nice to give, I mean, sorry, that system has some control, but not 100% control. So it'd be nice to actually give them control, because then we could write our own machine learning programs which made their own choices. So how do we do that? So if you're a, if you follow the, the, the handler's view, then we should obviously use effect handlers. Uh, at least it's one I'm obviously going to try to use. Uh, maybe other ways of doing it, but that's one that we're going to pursue here. And so we need handlers. How about that cost? Look there, the choice is made before you know the cost. So it might be natural to have some system with continuation. If the choice is made, given a continuation that tells you what the choice of that cost of that choice is going to be. So, so that's the kind of idea. So overall, we're going to have handlers and we're going to combine them with loss continuations and we'll give them the kind of uh, self-aggrandizing name of smart handlers. Okay, it's only as smart as you write. So, so the next couple of slides are just a quick introduction to handlers for those who haven't seen it. So they all, they're just kind of fancy exception handlers, although unlike exception handlers, you can return to where the the operation, the, the, or like calling it exception or whatever, was raised. So this is just a traditional one. We have an effect called exception. It's got one operation raised, which takes an exception and gives you nothing because you're just kind of finished. So there's a program, you raise the exception, and then you call F. If you do. That's obviously not very good. You're never going to get to F. So the exception handler, you write a handler for the raise, and, and it says when you raise an exception, you just call G. So that, that's what happens, you never get to F. But we can be a little bit more flexible. So, so the continuation, so if you look at that let Y be raised E and F Y, if raise E were to come back to the call site, it would come back to where I've written it in red. So the continuation would be a, you plug in some integer for resume here and you carry on with F applied to that integer. So now, so here's a different handler. It takes exception, but it knows it's also given the continuation. That is where you, that, that whole a uh, well the continuation. Oh, that doesn't quite come out. Ed, that's interesting. Anyway, uh, yes. So it's got the continuation. So it, it divides what it does according to whether the x is, is good or bad. Uh, the, excuse me, the exception is good or bad, which is x. If it's bad, you just give up and you do G like you're supposed to, but if it's good you call K with something or others like 20, it doesn't really matter what. And so when you do the calculation, and assuming it wasn't bad, you get you call K with 20, and K is further down the slides, I'm afraid. So, you, But you know what it is. You have to guess things, I've just realized from the other things too. Oh no, 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 you don't. Ah, ah, there it goes. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. So, so there, there's K written out, but it's just that resume here, you put a Z and you lambda abstract on it, that's all you do. Also, I can call K as many times as I like. I mean, this is just a ridiculous example for fun. I call K with 20 and I call K with 40, and then I decide which one I like and I choose that. Okay, so at least we're beginning to make choices here. Okay, so that's the idea. Here's a little language. Uh, that might be better. 
are handle typing here. That's better. A. So this, this is just a typical example, a model language that you can use. You, you have effects which are sequences of these L's, each L has a bunch of operations which have an, input, a, an output type. Given an output, the operation produces an input, which you might think is weird, and it is weird. But the idea is that the operation is an effect, and so you give it something, that's you output something to the operation, like it might be outputting something, and the operation gives you something back in. So that's, that's the way you can read it. And there's terms, so I mean, other stuff, but you can call it an operation, and you can handle some program N with some handler, and the, and you, and the handler has to tell you what all the operations do, but different, a, a little bit more complicatedly than we had before, this also has two other facets. A, one is that you can return, you, the return type doesn't, can be different from the call type, that's one thing. Uh, the more importantly, well, for this talk, is there's these extra P's, these are parameters, and so you have, if you, this whole thing, so, so this whole effect has some parameter. Whenever you call some continuation, you can change the parameter. So the effect of these parameters is in an applicative way to have some kind of local store that you can share between the operations. And we're going to see that used for examples of reinforcement learning. So, so that's good. So that's, that's the first half. And how's that? Five minutes? No, it's not. Uh, a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Anyway, so, so how about the loss continuations? So normally you define something of type A, but now we, we can only give you something of type A if you tell me how much it costs to, for any given element of A. So we, our programs are going to be functions from A to real to A. These are the losses. If I write that with variables so it becomes mathematics, that's the selection one. Right? But I won't go into the monadic aspects of it, although they're absolutely fascinating. No time to do anything very much. Uh, okay. So here is a variation in that language in which we add facilities for using these uh, losses. So we can, we can, they're all, they're in red. So we can actually have a loss. And when we write the handler, the operations can have ac access to the loss. And just technically that loss isn't just a loss within the, the, within the with H part of the program. It's all the rest of the program, no matter what. So actually there's more sophisticated constructs that enable you to kind of a, delimit where these losses occur, but I'm, I'm not going to talk about that. So here's, a, here's, uh, 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 here's some examples. Um, so suppose we want to find a model, we've got some data, we know what, how much a, a given model costs. So we let the model be miraculously choose, model choose, starting with, we're going to have a rate and a zero, it's going to be degrading descent. And what well, the loss we get is whatever that choice of um, model is. We need a handler, the handler says, well, we've got to, it's given a rate and a start, that's rate and zero in that case, and it's got the loss and the continuation. So it does this gradient descent using the loss function and it calls a continuation with the result. So that, that should seem natural at this point, which I think is hopefully nice. Uh, how about something a bit more complicated like hyperparameters? Uh, so here we're going to, what's the rate going to be? Well, suppose we don't really know, we'd like to see, see what costs different choices of rate are. So we'll let there be a hyperparameter choose operation as well, and, and it's just used above the whole previous example. And the, the hyperparameter thing says, well, you look to see what loss you'd get with rate zero, and you also look to see what loss you'd get if I made one step. This is the most trivial hyperparameter choosing thing you can think of. And you just go on with it, whatever one gives you the best result. Okay. That, that's a kind of sketch of the right kind of thing. And how much more time do I have, Matisse? Two or three more minutes. Pardon? Two or three more minutes. Oh, cool. Okay. I might get a question. Uh, so here's reinforcement learning, uh, it's another example. Uh, so we have a Markov decision processes, they have a transition function which is probabilistic, I haven't really talked about that, given an action a state, you get a new state, and given an action and the previous state and the next state, you get a reward. That's a general sort of thing. And this function is just running the Markov decision process for n times. So, uh, so you just, if n is zero, you're finished, otherwise you choose a state, and you 
you do the appropriate transition and you return the reward and you tell the reward the, the state. But I realise actually a bug in this programme when it's preparing the talk, you should also tell it the action. But anyway, I didn't. Anyway, never mind. The point here is choose. How do you actually do the choose? Uh, that's a, that's the whole the whole thing, the whole story. So one way Another, yeah, so what, one actual point which I'm going to ignore is discounting, which you can do by handler, but that's a bit technical and not so inter immediately interesting. So let's do something called queue learning. So queue learning is where you keep a table, this is the simplest thing possible, a table which tells you, given a state and an action, what it's going to cost you. So you're just going to learn the reward function of the markup process as you wander along, this sort of thing. So, but the point is, Relative to what I said before, the Q is the parameter. So the reward is going to know, give more information, I'll give it to the Q, and the choose will have that Q and use that Q to make its choice. So, so they'll talk to each other, that's the idea. So the choose says, I'm just going to choose the action which gives me the maximum reward according to what the table knows at the moment. And I'll pass the table on. The reward says, um, what does it say? It, yeah, it just, it just says carry on with the table updated by the reward that you've just, le you've just learned. And of course it does the reward at the same time. Okay, so that's it. So that's my examples. A, what have we done? A, what, Ning Ning, well, Ning Ning uh, written an uh, implementation in Haskell. We've got a translation from handlers and loss continuations to handlers without loss continuations. And it would be nice to be serious. So beginning to be serious with uh, Dan and Shang Ying, who are doing implementations in Google's JAX and so to XLA and so to hardware. And in the examples they did, they claimed, I'm sure their claim is correct, they only got a 10% loss in efficiency over a standard implementation. And given that there's no work being done in efficiency at all, hardly, that's, that, that's cheering. So that's good. So it might become real. So we'd like efficient general implementations, like large-scale uh, large case studies. And one thing that skated over was it just magically said that we'll do gradient descent, which uses differentiation. But there's a real question, how do you integrate differentiation with handlers? And how do you do that efficiently? So that would be really nice to understand. So maybe I've got time for one question, that's it. Sure, we'll take one. Okay, if any. Thanks, this is uh, really cool. Um, typically this loss continue, if the program has multiple choice points, then the loss continuation for the first choice point includes a second choice point. So if you're doing like gradient descent in that program, uh, how does it, is it doing gradient descent with respect to both choices or is it doing some kind of nested gradient descent? <laughs> Whichever you like, I mean, that, that's what I'm trying to say. I didn't have enough time to talk about it. I have a kind of angle bracket thing which will control the scope of the, of the loss continuation, so you can, you can do whichever you prefer. Um, cool, thank I you. I haven't had time to talk about it, sorry. I can show you. Okay. Thanks very much, Brian.